<laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I had a breakthrough yesterday, and it was like, it was sort of made sense, but it, does, it doesn't make sense, so I will show you what's going on, but uh, I've got two products here, and these are just test product cases to try something out with 3D printing, and the whole thing for me is I have some really old printers, kind of like the CR10, you know, that sit there and just, you know, crawl along and put, put filament down. It takes forever to print something, so a test situation. So one of these, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember which one it is. No, nope. uh, yeah, I think it's this one here. This was printed in about 13 hours, and this is what's the problem with the old, you know, old style bed slinging printers is like, you know, they're horrible. Same machine was used, but this time we made some changes. This was printed in five hours, and the products are identical. I, I almost cannot tell them apart. It's really hard to see the difference. In fact, the five hour one actually, in some ways, uh, the finish looks even better, you know. But the, uh, the whole thing is, is you don't necessarily have to bump yourself up into a hyperspeed printer. You can make the old ones go a lot faster, and it's just gonna take some tweaking work, and I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, this is the cheap yard sale special, and here's the really the main modification right now is at the back here. I had to cut some of that metal away and reduce it to just one one wheel on the back here, but it is uh, it's working. It's doing a great job, so pretty happy with that actually. It's not much of a setup, but really don't like this extruder, but it came with the machine at the time when we bought it, so it's like eh, we'll live with it. So that's my, if you've watched the show before, that's my $30 yard sale special printer, but it's now running faster than anything else I've ever had with a 300 by 300 millimeter bed size. So, wow, you know, it's doing a terrific job. And five hour prints for this product, it would be absolutely awesome. In fact, we're making another product that I drew up a long time ago from Fusion 360. And that product could run up to 17 hours on the uh, longer LK5 Pro. Right now, it's running on the piece of junk and it's uh, showing that it'll take six hours which is like boom wow okay great now the first once we got everything stabilized got the bed level got the you know the extruder running nicely back and forth on the track uh, the next thing I did was we had a nozzle jam which was actually kind of frustrating but maybe it was a good thing I looked around through my nozzle collection and I have lots of them uh, one quick tip out there, uh, if you're running PLA uh, and you see stainless steel nozzles, uh, I would say uh, don't buy them, stay away, yeah, I've got about 20 of them here. And the PLA just curls and sticks to the stainless, so it was like, they're, they're just utterly useless nozzles. I wish I hadn't bothered with them, I guess, but anyway, I changed the nozzle and when I was going through, I found I had something in a high flow nozzle. What's a high flow nozzle look like? Well, I'm gonna show you a picture. These nozzles are sold for Bamboo Labs, the picture you're looking at, but, and they're on Amazon. And I'll, in fact, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find those, but uh, the nozzles I have, I will see if I can get a link for you for that, because uh, I ordered them through AliExpress, but I think they should be available over here someplace at Amazon, I'm hoping, uh, because you know, nozzles on all the machines are, some of them are a little different than others. Sometimes you can or you cannot switch, you know, nozzles easily. But the high flow nozzle was something that I just happened to have it and I thought, I have never tried these for anything. And I thought, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this is an experimental $30 machine. Who cares what happens? Yeah, put it on. So it, uh, I checked the size and everything and it was exactly the same size nozzle as what came off the machine. So it was like, Perfect. This will allow me to just go ahead and put that nozzle in there. There is a couple weird artifacts that go on now. Uh, with that high speed, as you can see, it's three little envelopes that open up to allow more heat across the area of the uh, plastic or the filament. And it allows more filament to be going through, hot, fast, you know, whatever. Great idea. Interesting concept. Anyway, the other side of it was when you uh, go to change filaments, you will not get that weird long stringy piece out the end of your filament. What you'll actually get is just like uh, virtually like cut off at the dead, almost a dead end kind of thing, which was kind of freaky, but it was okay. Uh, I have been able to change filaments without any problems with those nozzles so far. Uh, hopefully they don't jam. Boy, that would suck. Yeah, but <laughs> who knows? The uh, thing was, 
with that nozzle, uh, we can run higher flow flow rates theoretically. So, and especially like there, that nozzle I'm showing you, I showed you was for Bamboo Labs. So it's like yeah, it's a high flow nozzle. The next thing you can do is go into settings. Well, instead of using Cura or one of the other slices, I decided to use Prusa. And the reason I used Prusa was inside Prusa you can build what is considered to be a custom printer. In other words, you put the specifications to it, you tell it what it, like you want it to do, and I actually made a mistake. The mistake actually seems to have paid off. It is working fantastic. I don't see any, you know, anything going wrong. I don't know if I can recommend it or not, but I put nozzle size as 0.6, uh, 0 0.6 instead of point, you know, 0 0.4. So it's, it thinks it's running a bigger nozzle, so the, high, the rate of flow is higher by default in the Prusa slicer. Now the other thing that I did with the custom uh, was we turned up the uh, maximum speed on the machine a little bit. We, we cranked it up. Uh, the machine was running between 30 and 40, I think it was millimeters a second. We cranked it to 60 just to see if it would, you know, is it going to handle it? And by golly, it did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're building a customized uh, profile for a custom printer in Prusa was part of the uh, deal. The mistake with the 0.6 was really weird because I, I went, I tried to fix that afterwards and it was like, wait a minute, you know what? We just, we already ran a product off that looks fine. Why fix, you know, why fix it if it ain't broke, you know? So we did that. The uh, high flow is probably what's working for that 0.6 setting. It's, it normally, if it was our standard nozzle, I don't know if it, I don't think it would work. But the Prusa custom, uh, customized printer settings was, allows you to experiment. And with me, with producing, you know, regular product type stuff for our 3D printing farm, factory, whatever, that is where you don't want to experiment with a machine that you use for production. That machine's worth a lot of money to me because it's producing parts day after day. So having this $30 piece of junk laying around was like, let's just let, let's just, let's have at it. I don't care if I break this thing. If it blows up and smokes and goes in the trash tomorrow, okay, fine, you know. But at least it allowed me to just have at it, you know, do whatever, whatever kind of experiment, you know, let's try higher exact, you know, extraction rate, let's try higher flow rate, let's try this, try, and just see what happens. And it was kind of like if it, you know, if the machine burns up, it's like, I don't really care. Yeah, so let's get down to nuts and bolts here for a minute. Uh, you know, 13 hours, you know, five hours, whoa, better, you know. Now, I don't have the machine here to show you, but I've already time tested this thing on hyperspeed printers. And this uh, particular one is the Solvo 8, which I'll show you a picture of it. And it's a, it's a hyperspeed printer. It's a really nice one. I'd like to have one, but it's uh, above my pay grade for now, apparently. <laughs> but it can produce one of these in three hours. So, you know, from the 13 whatever hours to five hours, yes, you know. Three hours, yeah, that would be really nice, but I have to spend $600 and bring the machine in, set it up, and get it running, get the files in it, and start producing, and you know, make sure there's no uh, problems with the uh, product at the point. At that point, uh, but uh, the th the difference I'm looking at is that this is five hours, that's three hours, and I haven't spent almost any money at all. Because you know yourself, the the parts for 3D printers is dirt cheap. That little square plate I bought with the four wheels on it that I converted on the extruder to run back and forth with, uh, we I ended up, that was like $9 at Amazon, and I had to cut quite a bit of metal out of it, put the wheel in the center at the back so it would clear at the back when it was running back and forth, uh, and then adjust my stop switch and things. But I got it to where it's like, you know, it's, it's working great, and it's using all 300 millimeters of the bed area square to produce these parts. And that is phenomenal. In fact, this part right here is 14 and 3 8 long. And if you take a tape measure and look at your bed, you know, on a printer, yeah, even on a 300 by 300 bed, that's just about all the bed there is. There's not much, you know, you have to build it on an angle, of course, and it's like, it's right at the edge, but it does the trick. So for two more hours faster, uh, and $600, whatever, roughly, uh, to move into the Solvo 808, uh, to get to this point, is it worth it at this point? Uh, for me, to tell you the truth, no, it's not worth it at this point. 
If I can produce the part I need in five hours, I'm a pretty happy camper. This is a huge, this for me was a game changer right here. This is like, this is huge because this means that I can produce my products at a lower cost, lower time on the machine. Yeah, you know, fantastic. Now the other thing I wanted to compare with was the high flow or hyper, hyper speed machines that we have these days on the market like the Bamboo Lab. And one thing that my hyper speed machines I noticed immediately was the nozzle temperatures are about 220 up to 240. And that's to me is part of the secret of getting that filament, you know, quickly through. So this machine doesn't have active cooling on it. So it's like, well, you know what, it's going to run hot. Even at 200, it'll be fine with the high flow nozzle because there's so much heat there, there is no uh, active cooling going on. So that's going to help it to be just go ahead and work uh, as a high flow nozzle. And I wanted to point that out to you because uh, I would not uh, try this without expecting some problems like on the uh, CR10 or the longer, the longer LK5 Pro. Uh, the other one I wouldn't try it on would be the auxiliary uh, sidewinder. Yeah, I think it's the X1, I believe. It's the 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter large plate sizes. And when you get into those machines right now, like the longer right now is on sale for like 229, it's, you know, or 250, whatever, it's a low price. And the reason is it's just so darn slow. But if you use a custom uh, set of settings in like Prusa Slicer, uh, maybe put the high flow nozzle in there and stuff, you might be able to get the same results. And uh, the game changer for me was just absolutely incredible. Let's go back to the 13 hours plus whatever on this uh, print. Uh, we have had the machine running overnight into the next day, from that day into the next night and having to get up at two o'clock in the morning sometimes and you know ripping this off and, and putting the next piece on and running it kind of thing over and over again. And now, at five hour intervals, it means during the daytime in the morning I can put one on, uh, during the afternoon I can put another one on and I can have two pieces a day rolling off the machine without any issues. It's, it's just, it's just mind-bogglingly, it's, it's huge for me, it's, it's huge. But uh, it also says that these old machines, are not necessarily a piece of junk anymore, if you can, you know, do a little bit of tweaking like that, I believe you could probably get them up to, uh, you know, pretty close to hyperspeed machines. No, they're not going to be hyperspeed machines. They're just not. You know, physically, uh, you're, you're, you know, you don't have all the uh, fancy carbon, uh, was it the carbon, uh, you know, tubing. You don't have the, or the, you know, uh, another one that I've looked at and I keep thinking about, uh, linear rail bearings, that alone would allow the machine to run faster. But then uh, in the software, you don't have Clipper because we're using the old Marlin. <laughs> yeah, you know, but again, you're able to do that. If, if I can get, you know, that kind of time better than what I had, I think that is, you know, it's fantastic. And I just, I had to share this with you guys because it was like, I am so shocked over this. And it was like, it all started out with a, I guess you could say a mistake where a nozzle jammed and, you know, like, uh, let's try something different. And uh, also the fact that, that it's a printer that was like, this is like a spare or backup. Let's just go to town and, you know, play or let's play where, you know, I was scared in the past to, you know, tamper with anything, but I was like, yeah, let's just have at her, man. Fantastic. Also, the Prusa Slicer uh, custom settings. I, I like Prusa Slicer. I've been using it for a long time for all my machines, and uh, so I don't really have any complaints. I do also use Orca. Uh, I have Bamboo Labs Slicer, even though I don't have their machine, but I, I do have their slicer here. Uh, also have Cura, of course, but uh, I don't use Cura for anything anymore, I don't think. It's a shame because Cura was the very first slicer I ever had to run a 3D printer with, and don't use it anymore. Now, there's one other thing I should point out too. Cura is free, but so is Prusa. They're both free slicers, and Prusa can really offer you a lot. And again, Orca, Orca Slicer, it's free. You're not paying anything for it. So I think it's it's terrific you get a hold of those slicers and try different profiles on a machine and just see what you can get. Oh man, it's Thursday. I think it's Thursday. Yeah, oh, we gotta call this off. But hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. Uh, probably got some solar coming up if you uh, live between Florida, Georgia, yeah, the Carolinas, maybe to Tennessee. Uh, 
Yeah, solar right now would be a real nice thing to have because a lot. I've just checked today. Uh, family still doesn't have power out there. Wow, you know, longer than us. Yeah, from here in Texas. Wow. Anyway, I'm out of here. Over and out.